What is up guys, Lord Nick here, bringing you another One Piece related video. And in this video guys, we are going to be going over a list for Mono Yellow Big Mom. Um, this list was going to come out last week. I got really busy with midterms and thus didn't happen. Um, we uh, just got real busy, just couldn't get it out. So to make up for that, I actually have two lists. It's going to be two separate videos. This is going to be the more competitive list. The other one's going to be more budget list. Um, you'll see the link for that video at the end of this one and then the link for this one at the end of the other one. So this list, though, is more competitive. This is based off of a list that a friend of mine has been using at Locals. Um, and I honestly think that this is a solid substitution for playing Katakuri as the leader and playing Charlotte Mom as the leader. You do have a couple of card tech changes from that. You know, I'm not running my generic big droppers. Instead, I'm using cards that are able to reload my hand, get my hand really big, and allow me to be able to fix my life with whatever cards I really want or think is going to be necessary for the current um, matchup. And then we get into the late game bombs to then win out the game. So let's kind of discuss what are the kind of key component cards of this deck. Uh, one of which is going to be Sanji, the two drop Sanji. This is just a really solid early attacker that allows you to draw cards. You draw from your life, replenish from the top of your deck. And because of mom's ability, as you get lower and lower, you could start getting those cards and replacing them properly. Um, on top of that, there's just ways of being able to just get card advantage, having a lot of these 2Ks go to our hand just gives us a lot of ways of stopping our opponent's early attacks, which means that as we get to later in the game, they should be down to one or two life while we're still sitting at three and being able to restack our life pretty effectively. And even if we do get lower, we have stuff like 10 drop mom, seven drop mom, Katakuri to start getting us back up there. So the other card is, that does basically the exact same thing is Daifuku's. We run four of him in the for the four drop slot. Um, if you can tell, um, our four drop slot is pretty open to just being Daifuku's. The other option is going to be Sanji's. So if so, for some reason we draw really, really badly, we can go into Sanji. But if we are in a spot where our opponent is not really pressuring us a ton early on, what we can do is drop a Daifuku and start being able to pressure them back with six every turn. This, again, does what Sanji does. Um, except for instead of two Dawn, it's one Dawn, and he's a 6K instead of a five. So it's pretty solid. Um, it's just more card draw, more advantage. Um, then as for that, we also only run three Amande. I think Amande is not necessarily a card that has to be ran at a four of slot. Um, this card is pretty useful against law. If you don't know that it allows you to get rid of those. It allows you to get rid of some pesky early drop blockers as well. One drop blockers in red and a couple other things that can potentially come out and become issues. If they're trying to save a searcher that maybe is a tap searcher, this can deal with that. Um, I don't like the card all that much myself, but I get the reason why it's in there. It's a searchable 2k at bare minimum. Um, and then other than that, um, the only other real like spicy kind of tech stuff is the fact that we have Soul Pocus in this deck and we're running uh, three of Soul Pocus. This deck specifically really, really works with this card. And that's just because that Big Mom's ability is when we are low, when we are three health or lower, we get to start stacking cards back into our life. Um, so if Soul Pocus is in hand, usually it's a dud card in any other list. Well, because Mom's ability allows us to fix our life, this card actually becomes super valuable, as most of the time in the mid-game, your opponent doesn't want to just lose a life. They don't get the card to hand, nothing. They just lose a life. So they're going to tell you, heal. But if they attack into this and tell you to heal, guess what? They just did nothing. You just got to heal for free. Like, they, they you wasted an attack. You essentially used a blocker to get an attack. This is effectively a blocker. So this card is super valuable in this deck, it is super useful, and if your opponent does say, F sure, I'll take it, then you're going to be starting to drop bombs usually on them to start making your opponent start losing their life and regret the fact that they said, we'll take one. It's a huge shift in power no matter which way this card goes, and because of the fact that we can reliably get it out of our hand and into our life, it's a very solid card in this deck, and thus we are running three of them. Um, other than that, guys, I mean, it's pretty standard, right? We're running two of the seven drop moms. This is a heal card. Um, in the mid game, you kind of want to drop this. Otherwise, it's kind of a dud card in your hand late because your opponent's just going to, if your opponent's down to no life, like a white beard, they're just going to choose banish the top of their life. I mean, yeah, it's a seven drop 8k, which is useful, but, you know, as the game goes longer, this card becomes less useful to drop. You kind of want to drop this on curve. 
Uh, so we're only running it as a two of. You can arguably turn it into Yamatos because Yamatos are much more useful, but you can at least search out the seven drop moms. So this card is interchangeable with Yamatos. If you want four of Yamato, do that. I have it as a two of because this is what my buddy was running. Um, and then other than that, we're running Beiges for out of out of life tr uh, triggers and 2k. We have Strusens for similar reasons to running Amande. He's just better at clearing a lot of those early pesky one drops for in certain matchups. He's also a searchable 2k, just like Amande. So when you add it up, we are actually sitting at a grand total of 15 2ks in this deck. So we have a ton of 2ks. We have eight blockers. Um, this deck is, or we have, sorry, not eight blockers. We have four blockers because I forgot this list does not run the Brulees. Uh, a later list that I will be showing you does. But in this list, we don't run Brulees. We run Sanji's only. Uh, this is a much more aggressive list, so it is a pretty pesky list for your opponent to deal with. Um, we have the Thunderbolts for removal and then Arrows for safety late. And if it comes out of life, we can potentially heal ourselves by getting rid of two dud cards in our hand. For instance, if it's super late and we have both of these in our hand, we can just get rid of those and heal. Um, so overall, this game, this deck's strategy is to stall out the early game while putting in some pressure with our draw engine, along with uh, potentially using Parasparo for the same thing. He is a draw engine that gets to attack. And then we want to use our 2Ks to prevent, keep ourselves at, at roughly about 3 life is the, is the sweet spot. And then as we get into late, going into 2 is pretty good. Um, and then we just start on curve dropping Katakuri, Yamato, Big Mom, Big Mom, whatever we need to. And it starts becoming overwhelmingly large things on our side while removing the thing, pesky things on our opponent's side. And it makes it very difficult for them to close out the game. Meanwhile, it starts turning the tide back to us to close it out. A uh, big part of it is due to the fact that 10-drop mom is just one of the most disgusting top-end guards in the game right now. Um, so this card, this deck is a mid-range deck. It is a mid-range slash tempo deck. It does not work as a control deck per se. It has some control -y elements to it, but it is much more of a mm, stall it to getting to our win cons. Um if you have a terrible opening hand, and by terrible opening hand, I mean you don't have a Sanji, generally you want to have one Sanji in your opening hand. This is a preferred card. If not, you want a Pudding. If not, you want a Parasparo. These are the three cards. You must have one of these three in your opening hand, preferably the Sanji. Next best is a, a Pudding. Uh, the best after that is is Parasparo because Parasparo is always coming down on turn two no matter what. Both of these could potentially be a turn one if you're coming in second. If you're going second, Sanji's a turn one. If you're going first, Pudding is a turn one. Um, so, I mean, if you're going first and you don't have a Sanji, uh, if you're going first and you don't have a Sanji, uh, then you want a Parasparo. That's just how it goes. You want one of these three, if not all of these three. Early on, they allow you to start building up um if you're going second daifuku becomes better than paro but um you kind of have both just in case you're on auto or even curve you want both of these cards as options and then otherwise you just kind of search and dig for 2ks to protect yourself um don't take your bomb cards as often you have so many bomb cards that you don't really need to use your searchers to find bombs um, unless you're already in a spot where you have a massive tempo swing and you don't need any protection, and then you can start trying to take the bombs that are going to fit on curve. But otherwise, take your 2Ks, try to protect yourself where you can. Um, maybe start taking some of your start taking some of, of your events out of your deck so that you can then start stacking them into your life and start preparing yourself for the mid to late game. All right, guys. Um, this video was going to have some gameplay to it, but because it's been so long and so late on this video coming out, I decided just to do two deck techs um, with the deck tech that I hopefully release next week. I will be having some gameplay with that and I might do some gameplay uh, in between now and then. Um, just kind of depends on how my schedule with school goes. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions about these deck techs, please leave them down below in the comments. If you have any comments or anything that you want to leave, Leave it down there. I'm pretty good about responding to this stuff. And hopefully, guys, I see you guys in the next video. And until then, have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye, guys.